In recent years, terrain following with drones has become a popular method to fly drones in hilly areas. Following the terrain means that the drone can safely and, and very easily collect high quality data. This can, useful, this can be really useful for mapping missions with the end goal of producing a highly accurate orthomosaic map at the end of the area. It can also be really helpful for magnetic surveying missions where the end goal is to survey an area's magnetic signature for mineral exploration applications. A key component for flying terrain follow missions is providing the drone with an accurate elevation map of the target area so that it can fly the correct heights during its mission. The elevation map is sometimes referred to as a digital elevation model. But what exactly is a DEM? How do they work? What formats are they available in? And how do you even work with them in a drone context? We'll explore all of these questions in this video. So, what is an elevation model? Simply put, an elevation model, a digital elevation model, is a representation of the Earth's terrain elevation at separate locations uh, over the surface of the Earth. These elevation models are typically found in the form of GeoTIFF, that is .TIFF raster files. Here's an example DEM. Now that we understand what DEMs are at a high level, let's try to understand how elevation data is formatted inside these DEM files. Digital elevation models are commonly available in the GeoTIFF, that is the .TIFF raster format. Other formats might be available, but in the context of drone missions, GeoTIFF raster files are the most commonly used. This GeoTIFF raster format is essentially a grid of squares, with each square representing a square area on the surface of the Earth and storing the elevation data about that square. Another way to think about this is essentially it's a digital image. The digital elevation model is a digital image formed of rows and columns. Each pixel in this image represents one square area on the surface of the Earth. The size or the dimensions of that pixel determine how big or small an area on the surface of the Earth we're looking at. This pixel size is appropriately called resolution of the digital elevation model. For example, if you come across a DEM file in the raster format with a 5 meter resolution, this means that all pixels in that digital elevation file represent a 5 by 5 square surface area on the surface of the Earth. Okay, so now that we understand what DEM GeoTIFF rasters files are, they're essentially just simply pixels representing the surface area on the surface of the Earth, the size of this area is determined by the image resolution which is five meters, for example, for a five by five square meter surface of the Earth, we can now try to understand how to get started with some of these digital elevation models. Well, to get started, we would highly recommend downloading a sample DEM from OpenDEM or other sources. We'll link them in the description below. Then downloading QGIS, a software tool which can visualize and process these files. Import the DEM file into the QGIS and have a look at round with the file properties. Get used to playing around with the file origin, the size, the height and width. Visualize this and transform the file in multiple different coordinate systems. So you might ask, where do I even find these DEM files? Well, you can find DEM files in datasets that are present online. Some of the links that are available are OpenDEM. Uh, and there's also curated sets of other DEM files that we can link in the description below. For a commercial drone mission, we highly recommend obtaining a highly accurate DEM file typically two meters in resolution to ensure that your terrain models are up to date and they reflect a target site or area appropriately. Third parties can include uh, mapping agencies around the world, for example, USGS in the US, Ordnance Survey in the UK, uh, ESA in Europe, and so on. So these third parties typically provide highly accurate DEMs collected using LiDAR technology. So we highly recommend using those DEMs. It's important to check how recently the data was collected and how has the target area changed since. For instance, a common challenge we see is that in remote areas, there is the growth of trees or vegetation, which has not been captured properly in the data set. Therefore, some of these data sets need to include tree heights, and some of them do. So these data sets are actually called digital surface models, which include the tree heights. So now that we understand DEM files better and even DSM files better, let's have a look at how these files are used by common drone mission planning software. So, at a high level, these files provide drone mission planning software with the elevation information of an area encoded in the form of a raster file, which we've learned is just a grid of cells. The software uses the information to plan the appropriate height for different drone waypoints during the flight. 
For instance, Hammer Missions, our flight software, uses the information together with the mission parameters to automatically generate the terrain following flight plans for the drone. Here's how a drone mission planning software typically reads a DEM file. The software would find the origin, essentially the upper left coordinate of this DEM file, the resolution, the width and the height of the DEM file. Sometimes the origin is also referred to as tile point, that's important to note. All this information is either encoded in the DEM file itself or is inputted by the user in the software. Now for every waypoint at location N, the drone software would essentially find a relevant cell in the DEM file using the formula shown in the screen above. So in these uh, formulas, the distance is essentially the Y direction uh, and, and the X direction and essentially the required cell has been found so that the software can read the right elevation module uh, for the cell at X and Y. Did we get a bit too technical? Okay, let's back up a bit. At a high level, we have learned that DEM files encode elevation information for a given site or area on the surface of the Earth. This elevation model or elevation information is read by drone mission planning software uh, to create a flight path that allows the drone to follow the terrain and ensure safe and high quality data collection. If you're curious to learn more about Hammer missions, our mission planning software and how it can read DEM files and generate terrain follow missions, uh, feel free to visit some of our guides, tutorials and other videos. Um, before we get into more of the resources, um, it's important to also mention some of the pitfalls you might encounter. So DEM files can sometimes be encoded in many different types of coordinate systems, UTM, WGS84, BNG, etc. So it's important to make sure your DEM and mission planning software are using the same coordinate system so that there is consistency between the data. Files can be transformed from one system to the other using QGIS or another GIS tool. We recommend using UTM coordinate systems with WGS84 datum where possible. The origin of the file is sometimes referred to as the upper left coordinate or the tile point. All of them are all essentially refer to the same point in the top left corner of the DEM file. And finally, it might be tricky to retrieve the origin and resolution from the DEM file. However, QGIS should be able to help with this on most occasions. In summary, in this video, we looked at DEM files from a high level point of view and also from a low level formatting point of view and how it works with drone mission planning software. We learned how DEMs can be integrated into terrain following drone missions and also looked at some mission planning options that are available to you today. All in all, if you'd like to learn more about DEMs, we've left some more links in the, in the description below. Hopefully this, use, this video was useful in terms of understanding digital elevation models in a bit more detail. If you like this video, do give it a like. If you think that others in your team or in your peer group might benefit from it, do share it with them. And if you want to be informed when these videos come out, please do hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that we can reach you with new content on the drone industry and how all of this stuff actually works. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.